Good morning, Floss Tube. I am Tamara. I am PD Stitcher here on YouTube and over on Instagram. This is a channel about cross stitch um, with some life stuff thrown in usually towards the end. If you are new here, welcome. I hope you'll stick around, see if there's anything you like, and um, if so, I'd love for you to, to subscribe and, and keep coming back. If you are returning, welcome back. Thank you for coming back and visiting with me. It was every couple of weeks, but now it's become every couple of weeks or every three weeks as life throws things in the middle of my filming schedule. So it's been three weeks. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll talk about that more later, um, about why I wasn't here last week. I have finishes this week, y'all. I can't believe it. They're little, but they're finishes nonetheless. <laughs> so I have finishes, I have some whips, I have plans, I have a little tiny bit of haul, I have some life stuff, and then we'll finish with the quote. Um, today is Sunday, August 7th. I cannot believe it is already August. This year is flying by and I need it to slow down because there's been a lot of life changes in the last few months, and I know there's more coming up soon, and, and I, need, I need life to just slow down a little bit. <laughs> um, it's about 7 in the morning, trying to get this done before going to church, and before the rest of my people get up. My, my one daughter, who also is a very early riser, is in the kitchen making her breakfast, so if you hear kitcheny noises, that's what that is. Um, I don't know what's going on with my dress whites. Sorry. <laughs> um, but let's get into whips and finishes. We'll start with the finishes. All three finishes are from the Advent Animals, which is a free pattern from Brooks Books Publishing. Um, I'm doing these as separate pieces. They're all on one big piece of fabric, but I'm cutting them apart and they're going to be finished separately when I fully finish them at some point. But I'm waiting until I finish all of them before I fully finish anything. Um, this is 32 count picture this plus sterling. And like I said, I have three. So the first one I finished was Colin Cardinal. I'm not doing, like I said, I'm finishing these separately, so I'm not doing the numbers, and I'm also not doing the borders or all of the extra snowflakey things, just because I think this is cute in and of itself. So That's Colin Cardinal. And then the next one I finished was Cassie Cow. I started these in July of 2020 for Christmas in July, and it's only taken me two years to finish, and I still have several more that need to be finished. And then the third one that I finished in the last few weeks was Hamilton Horse, who won the Ugliest Sweater Competition. So that's his little trophy for the Ugliest Sweater. As you can see, I have a few that I finished previously where I did do the snowflakes, but those are tedious, and I just, I don't like doing them. <laughs> so, if it looks fine enough now without them, there's not, they're not getting snowflakes. But you can see I have a couple more that need to be finished. So, I think I have five, five more that need to be finished, four or five. So, hopefully by this Christmas, I will have them finished, maybe fully finished. We shall see. But those are my finishes. I'm very happy that I'm actually getting some some finishes, as small as they may be. And I am doing, if you've been here before, you know I'm doing um, No New Starts 22 and 22. And so what I'm doing with the Advent Animals is I put one on my list of 22. And as I finish one, then I plug another one in that spot. Because we can have 22 whips going at any time. So as I finish one, I just put the next one into the spot that that one fin was finished in. So 
have more than 22 whips total. But by doing the tissue box method with that, it makes it a little bit more manageable. So whips. Last month, if you were here for the one time I filmed in July, um, <laughs> you know that I focused on four pieces in July. And they were all Christmas related or winter related to kind of focus on Christmas in July. One of them was Advent Animals, and I got a good bit done on those. And then the next one is my, this is my year focus for full coverage fanatics. This is also my oldest whip. It is Christmas 2. It is artwork by Ciro Marchetti, and it's charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. And I finished a page. And started on a new page. So this is where I am. Now is that not gorgeous? Gorgeous. So I finished. See if I can make this a little bit more manageable. This is on 25 count easy grid, and I'm doing tent stitch two over one. So I finished this page. And y'all, I know some people don't like the hanging park threads. It works for me, so I'm sorry if this kind of freaks you out to have all of this. It makes sense to me, and as long as I can stitch on it, <laughs> we're doing good. So I finished this page right here, got the rest of this wreath done and more of this curtain, and now I've started down on this page and doing more of this window. There is a ton of confetti in that window. All of those little blue, purple, white, there's like 25 different colors of blue, purple, and white in that window. Yeah. So it's taken me a little bit longer through this section because there is so much confetti. This whole piece has confetti because, as you can see, there are a lot, a lot of colors and a lot of detail. When it's done, it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. So I'm over here. I've done that part right there. I'm excited. The next, this page will finish, I think, the windows, or at least get down towards the bottom of the window. Maybe get in some of this first nutcracker's head, and then I'll work down here and get into some of the snow globe when I go to the next page. So that's Christmas too. If you hear busters beside me, I'm trying to keep my project somewhat organized, but yet out of his... <laughs> Out of where he can destroy them, he won't actually destroy them. He will just step on them, and um, he likes to step on my patterns. Not my working copies, my originals when I have them out. It doesn't matter where I put them. I can put them on. This is a little tray table that I've got y'all sitting on. And he'll sit on the couch and put his feet up there. I don't know why he knows where they are. It's so frustrating. So my next one is in this Garan Totten Bags butterfly bag and it is one that I didn't pull the original the pattern cover photo out it is winter wisdom from cottage garden samplings it's in the songbird garden series and I love these I love these this is the first one I'm doing but I'm hoping to do all of this series before I die, <laughs> because it takes me so long. I don't want to start the next one or another one in this series until I finish this one. So, this is on 32 count color and cotton, Harbor Gray. And I actually have gotten a lot done on this. So, I have all of one bird, most of the second bird. Most of this pine cone, I've got a little bit more to do. Three of the four trees, I've started on the word. Yes, I can't just focus on one thing and finish it. I have to flip around and flit around because I get bored. So I'll put it down and work on one of the other things I'm focusing on and then pick it up and start somewhere else. And, but now I have... The key, the rest of the word wisdom, the crown, and the house. And there's a little set of 
pine cones and the rest of the branch. It sounds like that's not much, <laughs> but I know it is, and it will take me a while. Just the word, just that little bit of, just that little bit of that W took me a while. There's a lot of stitches in that. It doesn't seem like it, but it really is. I think that's what's deceptive about cross stitch sometimes is you look at something and go, oh, that's tiny. Because when I first looked at this, I said, oh, that's a tiny little piece. Yeah, that's not a tiny little piece. It's deceptively small in this picture. But that's okay. It's pretty. I like it. I am a process stitcher, not a progress stitcher, not a project stitcher. I like the process of stitching, so it doesn't really stress me out if I don't get finishes often. I like to get finishes, but if it takes me a while to get there, that's fine. So I'm going to just be stacking things here, so he's over here. My next one is in, I'll have the box, the basket that these are in down here on a little st stool so that you can't get in them. Are you going to join me? No? Okay. Well, he may or may not join me. This is in a Barefoot Needle Arts bag, a little penguin bag. And this is December from the Cricut Collection. It's the last month that I need to do from this series. I've done January through November. I absolutely love them because I love all the little motifs and details with each letter. And this is a supposed to be a 100 stitches a day project. Not been doing 100 stitches a day. This was also a WIPGO goal that was pulled for July, and it was to finish three letters. I've done M, E, and not quite finished with C. I have just a tiny bit left to go in this C, though. A little bit left of this. No, I think I'm done with the house. I have to backstitch the actual letter, and I think there's something else that goes with that. Oh, there's a tree or something that goes here. So, when I, once I backstitch the letter, like I have the E and the M, it will be easier to see the C. And then I will have hit that goal. It was a July goal. We're now at August 7th. It's okay. I have the rest of this year. There's, there's still a few more months in this year for me to finish all these goals. Um, I'm okay with that. I'm not a fast stitcher, and lately I haven't had as much, I have had as much time. I've just chosen to use it differently, I guess. We'll get into that. So that was December, and then since August started, I have been working on my August Whip Go Goal, my first one, which was a page finish on Cardinal in the Snow from X Squared Cross Stitch on Etsy. I have not gone on there recently. The last time I went on her Etsy shop, she did not have this pattern listed. I don't know. I don't know if it, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know if it was artwork that wasn't hers. I don't know. So you can always message her and see if she has it because it's a pretty pattern. Um, but I got my page finish. This one, this one went quickly and I actually had a good bit that I needed to do. I had over 1,500 stitches that needed to be done to finish the page, but I did finish the page, so I got all that in. There was a lot. The one thing that I like about this one, as opposed to um, my Christmas 2, it's not as confetti heavy. Like, all of this is one color of blue. The opposite problem with that is I get bored. <laughs> I get bored stitching one color, so then I have to put it aside so I can then go back to it. But I got this finished in seven days. I was very happy. Actually, I finished that page yesterday morning, so in six days. And now I have my other Whip Go goal that was called for this month is a new start, five days on a new start, which I'm going to be doing later this month because I have a birthday start planned. And my birthday is at the end of this month. Um, and I'll talk about that in plans. But that's... Um, so since I finished one goal... And I realized at the end of July, I was going through my whip list, and I realized there are a lot of whips that either A, I haven't touched at all, 
this whole year since January. Or B, haven't had very many stitches. So I went through and kind of made a plan. So for all of my, my, my BAPs, my big awesome projects, I would like to get a total of 5,000 stitches this year, at least. Now Christmas too, I would like to get a lot more than that because it's my focus project. But for all my other BAPs, I would like to get 5,000 stitches. For my larges, I'd like to get 2,500. For my mediums, I'd like to get 1,000. And for my smalls, I'd like to get 500. For some of those smalls, that will finish them. So that's the plan as of last week. Will it change before the end of this year? Quite possibly. But what I did was I put all of my active whips, the ones that are currently listed on my 22 and 22, I put all of them on a wheel. And when I finished my um, whip go goal yesterday, I spun the wheel. And it spun pretty little San Francisco because this one has not had. It's a large, I believe, and it has not had 2,500 stitches. Either that or it's a medium and it hasn't had 1,000. Regardless, this is what it's going to look like. This is pretty little San Francisco from Satsuma Street. And I got this because even though I live now in the PD region of South Carolina, hence PD Stitcher, I was born in Sacramento, California. I lived there until I was almost eight, and then we moved to South Carolina. My dad was not in the military, but he worked as a civilian at the Air Force Base, so he got transferred to the Air Force Base here in South Carolina. I've lived here ever since. But San Francisco still holds some memories for me, and then when um, my, my fourth child my runner was 11. She made it to USA Track and Field Nationals for Junior Olympics and they were being held in Sacramento and so we took a day trip since we were out there for a few days. We took a day trip over to San Francisco so this is kind of to just commemorate that trip. And let me pop the top off so you can see. I actually have a good bit done on this. This is on 32 counts Weigart Nat Natural, and I have my notes in my lap if you're wondering why I'm looking down. But I've got all of this. I haven't done any of the back stitch, but I have all of this top part and I'm working down. If I can, if I can get a little bit done on this, a little bit more done on this, this year, I might, I might be able to finish it for finish that stitch December. We'll see. I have a couple that are kind of close. I say kind of close. I still have a lot of stitching to do. So for me, now Sammy Jo with Sammy J Stitches, um, she created Finish That Stitch December a few years ago. And she usually has projects that she just needs like a couple hundred stitches and it'll be finished. And she can whip one finish out a night, maybe even two. She's also a prolific stitcher. I, on the other hand, am not. I am a slow stitcher. So I might only get this and maybe one other project done and finish that stitch December, but it's still a finish for this year. So I'll take anything I can get. And that's all my whips. I'm gonna work, this is still in the queue snap because I'm gonna work a little bit more on it today. And then tomorrow I'm going to focus on, so we're kind of going into plans now. Tomorrow we're, I'm gonna start focusing on Christmas too. That's my focus piece for full, coverage fanatics and for um, semi-stained stitchers, semi-sane stitchers. Wow, that was a tongue twister. And my goal for that is a thousand stitches for the focus prompt, but I'm doing 10 stitch, so that's 2,000 stitches. So I'm going to work on that this week until I get those 2,000 stitches, and then I'll spin the wheel, focus on something else. And then, um, just keep doing that and probably go back and forth until my birthday happens and I start my other piece for um, my whip go for August. What month is this? For August. I also have some goals from earlier in the year that I haven't met yet. If it put, if, if uh, words, if the project gets pulled on my spinner, great, then I'll try and work towards finishing that goal. If it doesn't, some of them aren't on my spinner because they've reached those number goals that I set for them, but they didn't reach the whip go goal. So 
So if that's if that happens, once I finish, so I'm going to finish working on this to hit 500 stitches for this weekend. And then I'm going to start on Christmas 2. Then when I get 2,000 stitches on Christmas 2, I'll spin. After I get 500 stitches on whatever I spin, then I'm going to go back and work on a previous um, whip go goal that hasn't been met. When I hit that goal, then I'll spin again. So I'm kind of going back and forth between spinning the spinner and having it be a little bit arbitrary and also trying to hit some of the goals that I set for myself that I haven't hit yet. So we'll see how that works. If it works for August, then I may continue that into September, work on the September whip go goals as well as going back and doing some arbitrary. I stress a little bit too much when I have too many projects going on at one time or too many projects I'm trying to focus on. So um, I like doing this. It may keeps it a little bit monogamous for a set amount of stitches, a set amount of time, but knowing that I can then switch to something else soon so I don't get bored because that's also an issue. I don't tend to get bored when I'm working on Christmas too. I don't know if it's because all the confetti, all there's a lot of changes. The way I have it working with the 10 by 10 squares is working for me. I don't do that with all of my projects, but because that's a paper copy and not on Pattern Keeper, it, it's the only way I can keep it organized so it keeps flowing for me. The ones that I have that are Pattern Keeper, I'm kind of doing extreme cross country, kind of just doing cross country across a page, so it's it just depends. But for that one, the 10 by 10 blocks, and I may go back to 10 by 10 blocks for all of them. I haven't decided yet. It's working for me. If if you have a way that, that you can do extreme cross country on a paper pattern and you want to share that tip with me, please do. But the 10 by 10 blocks, it just means a lot of threads hanging. As long as I can keep it organized, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. All right, haul. I have a little tiny bit. Um, not much. I have my very last nest egg of Week Style Works from Trichette 3L Threads. I had to put a stop to it because finances. Um, if you've been with me for a couple of months, you know I got a new job. I'm much happier in my new job. <laughs> I love my new job. However, with my new job came a decrease in pay. So I don't have as much extraneous, extraneous, that's not the right word, extra. We're just going to go with extra cash to um, get cross stitch supplies. That's okay. I have enough stash. So I, right now I'm just going to focus on what I, what I need. But this is peach, peach fuzz. That's kind of, you can kind of see the, the variegation in that. And then Pelican Gray. I love Week Style Works. I know there are people that don't. I just like how variegated their variegated flosses end up. This is Pebble, which is a gray. I wish... I wish I had better light. That may change. Not today, but for future. This is Peoria Purple. This is so pretty. Y'all love this one. This is so pretty. Look at that variegation with the light and the dark. Periwinkle, which is another lighter purple. Peach Cobbler, which is kind of a peach and a brown and very pretty. I don't know what I'm going to use some of these for, but I'll find stuff. This is Peacock, which is absolutely one of my favorites. I love the blues and the teals. I love peacocks, so that makes sense. This is Pepperoncini. Very pretty greenish color. Peony. 
Now I'm kind of sad that I'm not going to be getting these anymore because I love, I love getting new floss. I love playing with the colors and I know my, my, my fingery oils are probably not good for rubbing all over them, but they're mine and I'm okay if my projects don't last forever. This is pecan or pecan. It just depends on where you live. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a southern girl even though I was born in California. I've lived here more of my life than I lived there, so I say pecan. So that is some of my haul, and then the other haul is my fabric of the month from Grace Notes Fabrics. This one I'm not. This is the only <laughs> monthly thing that I am not canceling because, or at least not right now. This is 40 count. This is the July. Fabric of the month, and this is Diminuendo, and I'm going to see if I can get y'all to see this color. Oh, kind of. It's a green, blue, not, not blue. It's a green, like a lighter green. That kind of gives you that color, but you can see the modeling. Isn't that pretty? They have the best fabric. I need to put it to use more, because right now it's just sitting in in my fabric bins waiting for me to use it. Um, wow, I feel like I'm surrounded by stitchy stuff. That's not a bad thing. So that's all my haul because, you know, I stopped buying stuff. <laughs> I have bought a little bit for this next month. Oh, I forgot one of my plans. Talked about it a little. I have a birthday start coming up at the end of this month. My birthday is the 25th of August. Should open that before. I'm sorry. So if you would like to join me on my birthday start, if you want to pick any ink circles, I'm going to be doing Reflections of Norway. My grandfather was 100% um, Norwegian. He actually immigrated here from Norway with his parents. And so I've grown up with being told the Norwegian traditions and just that whole part of my heritage has been a very important part of, of, of my life. And so I thought this would be a really, really good birthday start. I love, I love the Norwe the, the Viking hats and the swords and just the boat. There's a name for the boats. It escapes me right now. But you see, this is done on, hold on, let me look. Northern Light, no, this is done with Northern Light Silk Floss, but it is stitched on Heroic, is the recommended. However, the flag of Norway is red with blue and white. So I'm going to be doing, sorry, I should open this before. I'm going to be doing this on Rubius from Picture This Plus. It's pretty red. And I haven't, the fat, the floss hasn't come in yet, but it's going to be a really pretty blue, variegated blue from Threadworks. And I think it's just going to be absolutely gorgeous on this fabric with that blue. I haven't figured out where exactly on this fabric I'm going to put it with the blue thread, but I'm very excited and I can't wait to start it. But my birthday's not till the 25th, so here's that. I'm going to have to wait a little bit. But because I don't tend to finish what I start very often, I have two other projects that I've started on previous birthdays that will have their birthday on the 25th. So I'm going to have to give them some love on a different day this month. So those will also, I'm kind of hoping those will come up in the spin because I don't think I've touched either of them so far this year. But we'll see. So that's plans. Life. Um, I love my new job. Absolutely love my new job. Um, it gets a little crazy sometimes. We, um, I don't know if I've actually told y'all what my new job is. Excuse me. I am the office assistant for the city that I live in, Athletics and Sports Tourism Department. And so we, um, 
We are in charge of youth athletics, adult athletics, and then sports tourism. Been working on a few things. All of our fall sports, either their registrations for youth started <laughs> or ended <laughs> this month. So I've been doing a lot of that, answering a lot of phone calls from parents who can't get into the system or need help registering, things like that. Um, also been working on some new things just to kind of tidy up the website, things like that. Things I really enjoy. And the stress level is so low. There's a lot of work and there are some people who are not pleasant when they call and they are having trouble. But my philosophy has been to try and kill them with kindness, so hopefully that will help. Maybe, maybe we'll, I've had a lot of really, really nice people that I've gotten to talk to on the phone the last couple of weeks, so um, they're more nice people than the ones that aren't. The ones that aren't just tend to leave a lasting <laughs> impression, but I love my job. Also, let's see what else has happened in the last couple of weeks, um, especially this past week. So this last week, I was not here last weekend because we took a family vacation to the beach. Um, four of my kids, um, one who's chosen not to be a part of our family right now. Um, it makes me sad that she's kind of having to figure out her life right now, and, um, and that's okay. But the other four kids, my husband, myself, and even Buster, <laughs> went to, we got a condo at the beach and um, had a great time. I did get a little bit of stitching, not a lot, because a lot of times, that was the first trip we've taken Buster on, so I volunteered to stay at the condo with Buster while the others went shopping or went to play putt-putt or um, mini golf, whatever you call it. Um, we, I did, um, we did take him to the beach. He, absolutely loved it. I got a couple pictures, but um, my editing skills are really bad. Dina, <laughs> if you see this, help me. <laughs> Teach me how to edit so I can put pictures in. Um, Dina always, Dina from Half Stitch Cross Stitch, she always has the cutest pictures of her little dog Coco that she shares. And um, so Dina, if you watch this, help. <laughs> but I um, took some cute pictures of him on the beach. He wasn't really big fan of the ocean itself. He doesn't like water, but he loved the sand. He didn't dig in it. He just laid in it and just laid there. He liked trying to chase the seagulls. That was, yeah, we had to say no. <laughs> no, you cannot chase the seagulls. But, um, but that was fun. And then Monday we got back. Um, my youngest daughter got her braces off. My second youngest daughter, um, started school for the very first time, brick and mortar school. We've Obviously, she's done school, but we've homeschooled her whole life, and she's a senior this year, and she started for her very first day of real school. Homeschool is real school, but, you know, at a building school. Um, she started that Monday. So, got the braces off the youngest. She started school. My son, my oldest child, signed his first lease for his apartment on Tuesday. Okay, I'm going to have to figure out how to stitch these two pieces together because um, I hit my time limit. But my old, my oldest um, signed his lease on Tuesday and he started the moving out process Tuesday. And there's Buster's face. He's trying to make an appearance. Hey, Bus. Um, so he is fully moved into his apartment now. Um, it's bittersweet. We spend, as mamas, we spend their young lives trying to to push everything we can into them, to, to just fill them with all the things they need to become independent adults. And then they become independent adults. So they've reached where we want them to be, but it's hard to see them go out on their own. Um, I look at his empty room. We have three bedrooms. There are three children remaining. Um, the two girls who currently share a room have decided they would like to continue sharing a room for this year. And so um, we have an extra bedroom it will probably become my office slash stitching space. Maybe that's where I'll film floss tubes and hopefully get a little bit better lighting. But I don't have the heart to move anything up there right now. Maybe by next weekend. We'll see. Um, right now it's it's got his old bed because he bought a new bed. And um, that's about all that's in that room. So um, 
a few, he's got a few items left in there that he hasn't taken with him yet. But yeah, so that's been that's been what's been going on with us, with me, and my family. Sorry, I got a little bit emotional because it, it's like I said, it's bittersweet watching your kids grow up and move out on their own. Um, thankfully, he's still got some ties to us and, and likes to come back and he's he's been back over here every day to visit. I don't know if it's for us or for Buster. <laughs> he likes to visit the dog. But um it's nice to see him and to know that we haven't he hasn't completely, you know I want my children to fly and spread their wings and fly. But I also want them to come back and visit every now and then. That's always nice. <laughs> so let's finish with a quote. And this is from Oprah Winfrey, and she says, You define your own life. Don't let other people write your script. So, I encourage you to go out there and write your own life this week. Y'all stay happy, stay healthy, keep stitching. Bye. <laughs>